Well, indeed. But having said that, we have thought this for now a few months. Um, just after the Scottish referendum, the SNP... But not all the seats, surely? Not all the seats, sure. But we, for quite a while now, have thought the SNP might win over 50. There are 59 seats in Scotland. We never thought they would win 59. And frankly, we still don't quite think they'll do that well. But it's quite likely they'll win around 55 or so at the moment. You talk rubbish man is what Labour would say. Well, they might, but I think if you get to the more honest Labour strategists, they'll admit that uh, at best they're a very good swimmer swimming against a tsunami. There's not very much they can do to overcome what seems to be a big structural shift in Scotland. Paint the political landscape for me from the 8th of May. In Scotland or across the UK? Well, both, but let's start with Scotland. Well, I think what you'll see in Scotland is the Lib Dems holding on to one of their 11 seats, Orkney and Shetland, so they'll be right at the top of the country, but otherwise wiped out. You'll see Labour lose almost all of their 41 seats they won in 2010. Jim Murphy's seat. Jim Murphy's seat looks like it may be gone. Uh, Gordon Brown's seat of Kirkcaldy is going to be gone. He's stepping down, but whoever's replacing sure. him, or hoping to replace him. So Labour might end up with one or two, and they'll probably be tucked around Glasgow but the rest of Scotland will be yellow. And then finally, at the bottom of the country, there's three big... And when you say yellow, it's not for the Lib Dems. I don't. I'm, I, think, I think of them as orange. Um, OK. I don't, I, think, I don't think they know what their colour is either. Uh, if you think about the, the final party, the Tories, who are actually doing rather better than they were last month in Scottish polls, surprisingly, they may actually win all three of the big border seats um, in the south of Scotland. They hold one of them, and they might win another two. And if that was the case, then remarkably, the Tories would have more seats in Scot uh, than Labour in Scotland. Mm. Um, I interviewed uh, Nicola Sturgeon quite recently. She said the only neutral colour in Scotland is pink. Okay. Which is an interesting point for you. Just <laughs> keep that in your back pocket. No um, pink parties. No pink parties, moment. apparently not. So, what does that mean then, the fact that the SNP will have 50-odd votes? What does that mean as far as the makeup of Westminster is concerned? Because that means the Lib Dems, presumably, out the water. Well, they will be in Scotland, but actually the Lib Dems are hoping to hold on to around half of their seats. But the big Which makes how many? Well, around 27, 28. The big, their aim they won't is... be the third biggest party anymore. They won't. They? The SNP will. Uh, their aim is to get 30. The big picture here, though, is that while Labour are being wiped out in Scotland, that doesn't necessarily harm Ed Miliband's chances of being in number 10. Because? because? Those SNP MPs are almost certain they've committed to voting Cameron out of Downing Street. So when we think about which party or which Prime Minister is, is going to be there on May 8th or a few weeks after May 8th, Ed Miliband can count on the support of Alex He's Hammond not doing a deal with them. He the said, ah, 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 no way, no how. You don't have to do a deal with them. Though. They, they can choose who to vote for. All Ed Miliband is saying is he's not going to do a coalition with them. No, he didn't. No, well, no, but no, even, no. Even he a went further than that. <laughs> but even a confidence supply deal doesn't preclude the fact that the SNP can vote with him. Ed Miliband can't tell the SNP how to vote. And the point is that we're assuming the SNP will vote with it. So he can say, stop following me in their mind anyway? Sure, but I think uh, the, the point is, Ed Miliband can't tell the SNP what to do. And the SNP have committed to voting David Cameron down. And so when we think about who's going to be Prime Minister after this election, we can add Labour and SNP seats together and assume they'll vote as one block, at least initially. What about a national government? Well, it seems unlikely. We haven't had one since the war. Mm -hmm. So a national government is when the two main parties would vote together or form a government together. They go to the Queen and say, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we feel that we can, we can run the country like this for a while. You don't think that's going to happen? Well, they're, they're very divided on many policies. It's hard to see how they could reconcile themselves. Okay. So w how do you see the political landscape at Westminster then come the 8th of May? Well, I think that the important point is even though the Tories seem to be doing better in national polls now than they were a few weeks ago, they really need to be leading by about three points, maybe even four points, for David Cameron to be sure of staying in number 10. Because if the parties are tied in the polls, then they're probably going to be approximately tied in, on seats. And so even if David Cameron wins a few more seats, the maths just means that Ed Miliband is far more likely to get to 323 seats, which is what he needs to vote Cameron down and take power. And that's going to be because of the SNP. And you say 323 three because of Sinn Féin, who don't take up their seats. Sinn Féin don't take their seats, and the Speaker doesn't count. OK. So, um, how, how much jiggery-pokery do you think will be, chess games will be going on in the weekend after the election? I think we'll, we'll see endless, uh, whatever you'd like to call yeah, it. Yeah, you're not going to use that word. OK, that's right. <laughs> endless negotiations. I mean, there's going to be this amazing spectacle the day after the election where all the party leaders meet for VE Day at the Cenotaph. At around lunchtime. Including Nicola Sturgeon. 
really, I didn't know that. Mm, well, so can. we're going to be able to watch that and then there's going to be all sorts of things going on behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. um, the Prime Minister, though, can remain Will at remain. Downing Street um, unless uh, to try to form a government. Absolutely. The Prime Minister remains the Prime Minister until Labour can prove that they will be able to command the confidence of the House. How exactly that's done is quite complicated. Um, but David Cameron is, is very likely to remain Prime Minister, at least in the immediate aftermath next week. Which is what we saw with uh, Gordon Brown, didn't we? We did, but in 2010, Gordon Brown came so far behind David Cameron, he lost by around uh, f uh, 50 seats, that it was very hard for him to stay Still tried to do a deal, though, didn't he? He did, but I think it's far more likely you'll see Labour go in and try and do a deal with more hope than Gordon Brown did in 2010. I think it's fascinating. So do I. Great. <laughs> we'll chat to you again for now. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot.